Welcome back to the Fermented World channel. Today we're looking in on this lemon and lime mead that was done ages ago. It's all smegged out over the top because it overflowed whilst in a bucket and I just left it because I was like, meh, whatever. So we're going to be taking a hydrometer reading. We're going to have a taste and see where the gravity is at. Start gravity wasn't written down. What an absolute numpty. Notes are your friend. I think it says 1.122 maybe? I'm going to have to go back and look at the video for that to find out what it actually is, but we're going to take a hydrometer reading. We're going to write that down because notes are important, as you can see, because now I'm screwed. I have to go back and watch my own video, which is boring as hell. I don't know how you guys listen to me chat Ross all day. Anywho, moving swiftly on. <laughs> Oh god, that's proper on there. Oh yes, we got some mankiness in there. Yeah, I had to sterilise them because um, there's another mead that I checked a second ago and the gravity was 60 and it had been fermenting for god knows how long. It was started on the 14th of the 7th and it's still at 60, which means there's either something with the amount, something wrong with the amount of honey that I'm putting in or there's something wrong with the yeast that I'm using. Either way, I'm hoping this one hasn't got the same issue. Um, oh wait, no, the OG was 22, yeah. It's right at the top, 1.122. I normally put it down at the bottom, but it's at the top there. All right, so we're gonna duck between the lemon and lime bits. Bit of a random one to have something that's um, citrusy, double citrus with um, or honey, but like I say, it only came about because something ballsed up uh, with the fruit that I was going to be using for the mead that I intended to brew. Um, just off my own head, my own recipe, my own idea, which is why I haven't shared this video yet because it shows it ballsing up and uh, what went wrong. Well, I can safely say I was not expecting that. It has fermented everything. It's bang on the density of alcohol. It is 0 0.990. So some people think that it goes only to 1.000. It doesn't, it goes right down to 0. 990 which is the exact density of alcohol which means there's absolutely no sugar in there so a it's going to be dry and it's going to have double citrus notes from the lemon and the lime so interestingly how's this going to taste now but what's the difference where's the difference in it working because that had the same amount of sugar as that one mm. and this was done before that one which means it could have been a different set, a different packet of yeast. I don't chuff in though. Let's have a taste. See what we got. Smells uh, nice. Very dry. You can you can smell the alcohol. It's going to be strong. I know that much. You can it, it tingles your nose as it goes through. Catches the back of your throat. Yeah, this is going to be about 18%. It's got to be. Holy moly. But you know what? It's nice. Oh. Holy moly. Right, so what I need to do now is I need to actually pour a bit more in there. I know I'm going to have to drink it, but I'll wait until later to drink this because it's been strong. But what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to pour a small amount of honey in there um, to see whether 
we could back sweeten it a little bit uh, to take away that edge of the citrus. Now the citrus, the lemon and the lime is there. Maybe so, more so the lime than the lemon, but they are definitely both there and they are not shy. But, pardon me, the hit of alcohol is a little bit too much for me. So I'm wondering whether we can kind of hide that with a bit of honey. Now I'm not gonna go mad because obviously I need these for the next couple of batches. Um, but let's mix that in. There for now. Very interesting how nice that was though. Um, and could a bit of honey just make it that little bit better? Or is it better the way that it was? You don't know until you try it. That's why we only use a small amount of honey when testing in like a small glass like this. Because if you use too much and then you don't get the amount right that you need to put in for the amount of liquid that you've got, you won't get the same result as what you had when you tried it like this. Still tastes strong. Still citrusy. Hmm. I'll be back. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit through this and, and try and think what I actually know what I need to do. But I need to take another sample out to be able to compare it um, to the one that's now got honey in, don't I? Or I'm not it's not a very good comparison to see which one I want to keep. First impressions, I think I'm gonna keep the, the dry one. Um, just because it was the first impression of it and it was just like oh wow that's a, a bit of a party it's just a shame about that alcohol hit towards the end with it being so strong now, I thought they were all going to bugger up the same way with having a very high final gravity, but this is one that hasn't. But how has it done that? Anyway, notes quickly. 20th. Oh, the 9th. 23. 0.990. Oh, so it's dry as they come. It cannot go any drier than that. That is literally no sugar in that at all. It is just alcohol water and whatever flavors are in there so side by side comparison i don't really fucking drunk as a vote like this um so the dry one see the fruitiness is there you've got that citrus where it's just very 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 it's there, you know, it's, it's uh, what's the word? It's dominant. And unfortunately, as nice as that is on its own, I think the dry one wins. Yeah, dry one wins, so. I'm gonna put that in there anyway, and I'll drink that later. I'm not drinking it now, because it's just, it's a bit strong. I need to wait for the kids to go to bed to drink that. So let's pop that on there with a, a little mat on top. Otherwise we're gonna have some drunken fruit flies in there. Wouldn't be the worst end, would it? Death by free booze. Right, so we're gonna be racking this, and yeah. I'm well impressed with that. It's good. Let's quickly check the ABV. The ABV is actually 17.95. Some people round up, but at this point, I kind of round down because it's not past the five. I'm not actually sure which way you're supposed to do it, but I'm gonna say it's 17.9. Um, 
which is a kick ass uh, on on the behalf of that. So um, 17.95, but we'll just do 17.9% as it's not over the five, like I say. That's just how I do it. You might do it a bit differently. So we're gonna rack this off the lemon and lime crud that's in there, been floating around in that for a while. Um, still giving up its uh, lovely flavors. I mean, you know, for one that was kind of, oh crap, I can't do the brew that I wanna do. I'd already got one of the ingredients sliced up ready. Um, which was the lime, I don't mind letting you know that. Um, and yeah, I thought, well, what can I do? I'm not just gonna do a lime mead. So I was like, I'll add some lemon. Adds another dimension, two, two citruses, and it actually worked pretty cool. Whew. That's, that is strong, that is strong. I've actually got all heated and stuff after drinking it. So yeah, damn good. So we're gonna be putting some stoppers in here. We've got some uh, potassium sorbet, which is a fermentation stopper found in many, many foods, many, many fruit things. It just enables, sorry, it disables the um, yeast from managing to consume any more sugar. There is no more sugar in here because it's at the, the level of that it is, but just for stability reasons, I will be putting this in. Um, just, I don't know, just in case, you know, just in case. I mean, it's pretty much at its tolerance anyway, so it shouldn't be able to go any higher. Oh, my pestle and mortar is wet. That is not good, Char. Bloody hell, how's that got wet? Right, so back to the old school, can't use that now. Uh, the Camden tablet's wasted. So we're gonna get another one, we're gonna go old school. We'll crush it with a spoon. Is what we'll do. It's what I used to do before I got a pestle and mortar and it is a perfect way of doing it if you don't have pestle and mortar. How that got wet, I don't know because I've only just used the damn thing and it didn't have any water in it then. So one Camden tablet per gallon we're gonna just crush it down as well as we can. And then we just smooth it out like this. Until you've got it into a powder that's gonna be nicely and easily dissolved. The finer you get it, the better. But if you're using a pestle and mortar, try not to drive it too hard into the, um, the base. Uh, because what it does is it then sticks to the base and you end up not being able to get it out. There we go, it's as near as damn it, as good as it's going to get. Now we rack. And as we rack, it kind of mixes it up, but I do give it a helping hand as it goes in, just to get them... Um, mixed up and going as, as it dissolves and spins around. You get a bit of a whirlpool going, it just continues and helps it out. We're not trying to add oxygen here, so be careful. Even though at 17.95%, there is zero chance of this getting spoiled. So let's just speed this up. We're going to give this a little stir, make sure we've got all them stoppers in there. We don't want the grittiness just sat down at the bottom. And at the same time, we remove any waste carbon dioxide. Um, there's not a lot of bubbles coming up out of this, to be fair. Again, we're not trying to beat any oxygen into this. We're literally just doing it nice and gently, stir it around, get rid of any waste. There's a couple of bits of the lemon and lime pith uh, floating about, but I'm not too bothered about that, it's perfectly edible. I can see what it is. I know it's not any type of sediment or like that. I mean, the reason why we put it into the pitcher, as I keep saying, is simply because you don't want all this gak going into your drink, because that shit's nasty. 
excuse the language. I do try not to swear on my videos, but sometimes one always slips out every now and again. Um, and to be fair, that's very, very good of me because I swear a lot. We're now going to be going from the dirty demijohn to the clean demijohn. Start this going in there. And then as we transfer this upwards, gravity will do its thing with the auto siphon and it will remove it from the dirty demijohn with the GAC to the clean demijohn with no GAC. Here comes the rain again. Uh, let's speed this up because it's just a bit boring and I've seen it a thousand times. Right, so that is nearly all of them that were sat waiting over the summer holidays and just doing nothing. I swear some of them have evaporated, you know, because there's not a lot in some of them uh, compared to what they should have been. Um, now, these are all in secondary now, apart from this one. That's still got a day to go because it's got a yeast starter um, going in it to try and kickstart it because it's still crazy sweet. Um, you can see what happens for that if you check out the guava mead um, video. Yeah. All I can say now is we've got some new meads coming. Um, I'm not going to tell you what they are because that's not how I roll. I like to keep the suspense. Um, we're going to label this up. We'll write down what it is, what the ABV is. In about a week, we'll get these ones that have been put into secondary in bottles because they're already clear. Normally you wait for them to clear out. This has got a little bit of a haze or something. And I think it's from the fruit, to be honest, because there is bits of pith and stuff like that floating around. Um, all in all, not a bad day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.